question that many of the students really have and this is somewhat you know uh, not understood rightly in the in the uh, i would say in the world is the eligibility for the cpa qualification there are many many confusions i can tell you you know in terms of you know many discussions that i've had with various students in different parts and pieces and different you know parts of the world many of the folks are not really clear in terms of you know what the eligibility of us cpa is and will i be eligible for that or not um, you know what do i really need to do to be eligible for it and so on and so forth so people come with various confusions and of course you know when you, when you really scan through the net you know you get all the more confused so you know it is all the more all the more vital for us to really discuss on the eligibility for for pursuing us cpa so i thought it is the best question to really be answered by yourself thank you so much pankaj uh, and eligibility is a very very important area when it comes to the cpa qualification unlike the other courses where uh, just by doing one course you become eligible here uh, you need certain number of credit hours to become eligible now in india we have got bcom courses uh, being provided by most of the universities right and these bcom courses for every year we get 30 credits right so 30 credit for one year which means that if we have done a three year bcom we get 90 credits however for the us cpa you need 150 credits as per the most of the states requirements there are few states who accept 120 credits also which means that we are left with 30 credits in case we have not done our bcom from a nac a accredited institution so for example if you have done a bcom from nac a a plus a double plus right with 60% marks then you become automatically eligible for cpa because you have got 120 credit hours with you however uh, if you have not done it from a nac a institution you have done it from say any other institution which is b grade or c grade or beyond uh, below that then obviously you need to get more credits now if you look at a post graduation in india right if you look at an mcom or an mba right you get 60 additional credits because of that so 30, 30 plus 30 plus 30 90 because of your graduation and post graduation gives you 60 additional so if you have got 60 additional by doing a post graduation you get 150 credit hours to actually qualify for the cpa examination so it is really very important for us to understand this eligibility we should have actually studied accounting and finance related paper papers during our education so somebody says that okay i'm a btech or a be am i eligible for the cpa qualification practically you are not because you have not studied accounting and finance however for example in two two of your semesters you got accounting and finance related courses and you are able to substantiate those then you might look at uh, asking for a eligibility there otherwise uh, what we advise is that somebody who has done an mba in finance or a mcom right post graduation then definitely it becomes it makes them immediately eligible for the cpa examination so it's slightly tricky but what i can tell you is that not a rocket science it's quite simple right uh, we need to have those credit hours to be eligible for the cpa course now if we we are a chartered accountant uh, intermediate or we have completed ca we automatically become eligible for the cpa now ca intermediate with a bcom gives them an eligibility uh, straight away they they get 120 credit hours there if somebody has completed ca then they get 150 credit hours right so for ca cfa any other accounting related qualification they they get the eligibility or otherwise you should have done bcom plus additional one or two years of studies in terms of your post graduation in the field of commerce management or finance okay so if i if i have to like uh, put this to perspective in terms of you know uh, uh, different buckets that we have we have bcom bucket the students who are like only bcom so what we are what we are saying over here is that if you are only bcom then you are not eligible unless and until you have done the bcom from the nac a or a plus university and college correct right now however uh, you need not worry in case you're not eligible uh, what we can do is that we can support you with a bridge bridge program right bridge program is of uh, a period of 6 months to 1 year and it can be done parallelly so you can start writing the examination and parallelly complete the, the bridge course also so that will ensure that you are able to uh, qualify for the cpa eligibility right so uh, you can start your studies and simultaneously you can get the bridge uh, certification done so that that will be helpful in terms of getting those credit hours which are missing for the students 
Absolutely. And, you know, I think you well covered that, that, you know, you know, we will certainly help in terms of, you know, providing the, the bridge course in terms of, you know, covering that gap in, in whatsoever, you know, ever when possible. So, you know, you need not be worried about that. So that's the bucket number one, wherein we have the BCOMs. Uh, that can be NACA and non-NACA. NACA are straight away eligible and, you know, that is, you know, done and dusted. If you're not BCOM from a NACA university, you know, of course, there is a bridge course that you really need to go through and, you know, we can certainly help you out with that. Coming on to the second bucket, Krishan, we have the MBAs and the MCOMs. So what you're saying is over, over here is that they are straight away eligible. So there is no point or there is no confusion as such. You know, if you've done your BCOM and, and BBA and you have gone for MBA or MCOM, then you're eligible per se. There is no confusion as such. So guys, nothing to be worried. If you have this qualification, you are very well eligible. So the third bucket that you mentioned was the BCOM and the and the CA IPCC cases, the IPCC who, you know, people who have really qualified their IPCC. And when you say IPCC inter, it means both the groups, right? So inter one That's and right. inter two both or IPCC one and two both. And then if you have done your BCOM, then, you know, you would get the 120 credits and you're, you know, bang on there. You can just go in and crash this. That's what this third bucket is all about. You can correct me, Christian, if I'm going wrong, you know, that's what I've understood. So I really want to, you know, be calling yeah. this out so that, you know, you know, not, no one is really missed on that. So sure. the fourth bucket is the, the qualified uh, professionals. So if you have a chartered accountant, uh, CWA and so on and so forth. So if you're qualified in terms of the whole qualification, then you straight away get those 150 credits and you're straight away eligible and you just go and crash the exam and that's what it is. Correct. With that's 120 right. credits, Pankaj, what happens is there's a limitation to the states. There will be hardly one or two states will be happy to uh, look at 120. However, if you have one, 150 credits with you, uh, I think... Uh, you'll be able to cover at least 49 out of the 50 states straight away. Right. So there should not be any challenge. Yeah. All right. All right. And guys, just to let you know, you know, while we are talking on that, you know, this evaluation as a process or, or you know, uh, this evaluation as an exercise, if this really brings some kind of confusion onto yourself and you really need any kind of help, clarification or support in relation to that, you can certainly reach out to FinTram and we'll be more than happy to pick your case. And of course, talk through that, We'll review that and, of course, tell you in terms of, you know, what is the best way out for yourself to really uh, go there and, of course, be eligible for this course and, of course, start killing this as in, in the in the best possible manner. And so in case you, you they have got any other qualification, Pankaj, uh, it would be a good idea for them to get it checked uh, yeah. with FinTram first. And what FinTram can do is that uh, FinTram can get uh, the same evaluated through NASPA, which is the National State Board of Accountants in uh, America. So through NASPA, it can be evaluated and uh, based on that, they should be uh, ready to go ahead. So that should not be a problem. Yes. So guys, any confusion, anything that you have in mind, do not do not get bogged down by that. You just have to reach out to Fintram and we'll be more than happy to pick that up and, and support you in the best possible way. So need not be worried on that.